Hello everyone. Welcome to Global Online Platform. I am Rahul sir, your management educator. As you know that we are discussing the unit number nine, International Business and Information Technology. In today's lecture, we are going to cover the IMF, World Bank, WTO and different types of information system. Let's see one by one. Before starting, there is uh, an important information for you that the UGC net uh, exam is very close. Uh, we are offering the UGC net management paper two course. If you take this course, you will get complete video lectures, full syllabus notes, test series, PYQ PDFs with detailed explanation. This is going to be a target based preparation. The biggest advantage of this course is if you take the paper two course, you will get paper one totally free. The fees of this course is uh, just rupees 7000 and you have the validity of this course is one year. Here you can see all the contents we have provided in most uh, comprehensive and structured way. You just have to download the global online app. After downloading, you will log in. When you log in, you will see this home interface. In this home interface, you have to click the store button and select this UGC net management or you can search in the search box also. After paying, you can access the content n number of times. If you want to join the batch, just contact on the given number through WhatsApp or if you have any query, the query will be resolved. In today's lecture, we are going to cover what is uh, about the, uh, this lecture is quite static because here all these things are root learning based. Here we are going to study the IMF, World Bank, World Trade Organization, information system, and data warehousing and data mining. These uh, two topics are related to your IT, IT section. The rest uh, three are uh, uh, WTO, World Bank, and IMF. These are part of your world, what uh, international business, IB. And this is this one is IB and this one is IT. Okay. Let's understand one by one. Here, what uh, first of all, IMF, uh, International Monetary Fund. It was created uh, after the World War II in the Britain, Britain Woods Conference in the year 9, July 1944 in the Britain Woods Conference, which took place at where? Which took place at New Homespire. Okay. Then the managing director of the, the IMF is uh, Kristalina Georgieva. You can remember her by, by, movie, by name of the movie that is KGF. Okay. Kristalina Georgieva, female dad. Female dad. Nike? MD, M, who is MD? MD is remembered, can be remembered by KGF, Kristalina Georgieva. Then uh, IMF was founded in Ju July 1944. Okay. Then founding members of IMF, we, how many founding members IMF had at that time when it was uh, established? 44 founding members were there. Then where is the headquarter located in the uh, of IMF in Washington DC of uh, in United States? Okay, then who is chief economist? Earlier the chief economist was Gipa, Gita Gopinath, but now uh, this year it has changed. The new um, person appointed is Piri Oliver uh, Gorichal. You can ask in the exam, uh, you can be asked by the examiner may try to confuse you by giving both the option. Just you tick the option which has POG. Okay. This short form of this name of this person, this is Piri Oliver Gyurzva. Whatever is the name, why do these people are made uh, at this position, we know. Kristalina Georgieva is quite simple. She can be remembered, but this fellow, okay, whatever, let it be. Then how many members of the uh, IMF are there? 190, uh, 190 countries are the member countries. Then we have uh, recent member, uh, members is generally asked in exam. So I have added who is the recent member. Most recent member is the uh, Endora joined in 2020. Okay. Then main, main organ, main organ, who is the main organ of IMF? This is a board of directors. Okay. Then formation when the IMF was formed on 27 December 1945 in the Bretton Woods Conference. This is the time, date at which from which it came into effect. Then what are the purposes behind establishing the IMF? The purpose behind establishing the IMF is to promote international monetary corporation 
then to support maintaining the equilibrium uh, um, of the po point of uh, sorry uh, balance of payment of the country it uh, uh, the main function of this imf will, uh, so in his surveillance function the main basic fund, uh, work of the function of this imf is to uh, to check that the bop of the countries is properly uh, if, if any time uh, is properly in the equilibrium position or not is pr proper or not uh, imf keeps on monitoring on this uh, thing be a balance of payment because whenever any uh, disequilibrium occurs he offer assistance okay then and third one is facilitate international trade uh, international trade is facilitated uh, by uh, imf this is also one of the function uh, purpose then foster sustainable economic growth uh, for as you know that it is support uh, related to financing so it is supports the econo sustainable economic growth then last one is makes resources available to the member experiencing the balance of payments difficulties whenever the company uh, whenever the countries face says the problem of disequilibrium in the balance of payment they may uh, imf supports them okay so let's revise this quickly who was the uh, the managing director kgf uh, that is crystalina georgieva then we have founding members they were 44 i 44 i am uh, 44 uh, in the date was 44 mostly in um, i is the marathi word is ca called as mother in english okay so what was the age of that mother it was 44 in 1944 it was established okay then founding members how many members are there in the uh, mother's family there are 44 members 44 at the time of founding members but the present member is, are how many there are member countries are 190 okay 190 member countries are there then andorra is the recent member then main organ board of directors then formation set 27 december 1945 okay and these purposes are quite easy to remember just reading once or twice you can remember it now these are some facts fast facts about imf that was uh, year of the imf was established 1944 we have seen member countries uh, 190 and then 150 nationalities represented by staff 150 nations are uh, nationalities uh, uh, representing staff is there then 24 executive directors are there then 303 trillion 303 for hands on technical um, advice policy oriented and uh, training and um, power so this is the funds available and 1 trillion total amount of imf is able to lend to its member countries total amount if uh, how much uh, lending amount the imf has it is 1 tr 1 trillion dollar okay and the, now there are 34 current lending uh, um, arrangement 34 types of lending facilities provided by imf then uh, it, it, there are 76 countries that received the emergency financing during the uh, pandemic during the pandemic how many countries did the emergency uh, took the advantage of emergency financing uh, th this is 76 countries and it offers loan to least developed countries at zero percent okay i hope this is clear and the last one is uh, three three zero three trillion dollar for the hands-on technical advisor advisory poly, policy oriented bring and power and peer assistance sorry power not power it is peer assistance the diagram is quite quite then we have objectives of IMF. What are the objectives of IMF to promote international monetary corporation? We have seen this to facilitate the expansion and balanced growth of uh, international trade. Balanced growth of international trade we have seen to promote exchange rate stability. IMF supports in exchange rate, um, so maintaining the exchange rate stability, then to assist the countries in establishment of a multilateral system of payment. If any country wants to establish multilateral payment system, the IMF assist them okay to give the um, confidence to give confidence to the members by ma by making the resources available to them under the adequate safeguards under the adequate safeguards the uh, land facilities or the resources are made available then we have functions of uh, imf what are the these are the four major types of uh, functions that is uh, BOP crisis uh, assistance, then exchange rate stability facilitates uh, facilitates international trade and uh, fosters uh, foster sustainable equivalent growth. 
and one another is there this is surveillance okay one other another function is there let me write this is also one of the important function that is surveillance then uh, for foster economic growth and development then facilitate um, international uh, facilitate international trade exchange rate uh, exchange rate for facilities uh, exchange rate stability then bop crisis assistance and foster sustainable economic growth so you can remember it by i am a mnemonic i am writing here that is bop crisis b for bop crisis then e for exchange rate stability then s for sustainable economic growth and this facilitates international trade it okay and less the, this s is for surveillance okay best i best is you can remember that uh, sir sorry b b c test b c test you can remember okay that is surveillance uh, surveillance balance of payment exchange rate, uh, maintaining exchange rate stability sustainable international trade and uh, pro sustainable uh, sorry sustainable economic trade and facilitate international trade i hope this is quite easy to remember now uh, this was all about imf now we are starting with the world bank the world bank is also one of the important what the same uh, same thing uh, but its functions are different the it is the it has wider scope imf deals with only with the monetary but it deals with the overall development now let's see what are the facts regarding the world bank the world bank is an international financial institution that provides the loans and grants to governments of the low and middle income countries for the purpose of pur pursuing capital projects yeah this is taken i have taken from the wikipedia then the headquarter of washington uh, headquarter is washington dc in united states same as imf then the president who is the president here the david malpass is president it was founded in july, july 1944 in the bretton woods conference in new hampshire united states then motto motto is what working for motto the motto of imf uh, sorry world bank is working for world free of poverty then subsidies subsidies international financial corporation and international financial corporation ibrd uh, ida that is international development association miga and uh, what is icsid icsid that is international center for settling in the investment disputes then we have a parent organization united nation the parent organization of world bank is united nation and founders are the john maymard john maymard kenes and here dexter white okay this will not be asked you have to remember the name of david malpass okay you can remember wb wbm means wdm which is world bank or bdm just bank david malpass world bank david malpass okay the year was same as I, 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 many things are similar then now you have to remember this five groups name because some once it has have just happened who who is not part of a world bank such a type of simple question was asked from nta so there are total five members that is ifc uh, the ifc then icsid miga ibrd and the ida okay now this is some um, uh, another thing i have brought for you you can take the directly the screenshot because yes here you need to remember these points which i am ticking that imf and ibrd uh, are the outcomes of bretton woods twins then it provides loans for the uh, least uh, long term long term capital investment okay then it was founded on 1st 1st july 1944 as a result of bretton woods conference okay the uh, generally the world bank was constructed after the second world war to assist in the reconstruction and development then we have the what are the objectives of imf to the first one is reconstruction and development second one is encouragement to capital investment and uh, and foreign trade 
then the third is establishing the peace rate economy fourth one is environmental protection then we have members members how many members we have we have uh, 189 in case of in case of imf there are 189 members uh, sorry 190 members and in case of world bank there are only 190 members then headquarter headquarter is in same uh, same uh, washington dc then the two goals or two prime goals of um, imf is what first one is to end poverty uh, to aim and extreme poverty by 2030 and the second one is to bring people bring 40% people uh, out from shared prosperity okay these two things you need to remember uh, that is end extreme poverty by 2030 and uh, bring 40% people out of shared prosperity these are the two basic two main goals okay then this is the, the now we are starting with the, the main subsidiaries of world bank that is ibrd first one is the ibrd international bank for reconstruction and development established in 1944 then the leader is hirsina uh, kristalina georgieva no 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 here not kristalina georgieva here it is david malpas here in case sorry sorry for this i am really sorry here the just a second yeah 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 it was correct sorry sorry uh, i was confused because i i thought that uh, the name of the president is not mentioned so the leader is crystalina georgi was same as imf headquarters same as world bank, world bank uh, ib uh, washington dc and the president is here is david malpas okay then lead, it's the leading arm of world bank then the members are one, 189 countries are member of ibrd and this is world largest development bank which is the world largest development bank not world bank this is ibrd okay only imf members this is the condition this is the prior condition which a, a country has to fulfill if 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 it is the member of imf then only it will be allowed to become the member of ibrd then recent member of uh, no, no recent member of ibrd then we have the provides loan for it provides loan for development and reconstruction as the name suggests and 60% loan to middle income countries 60% loan is provided to middle income countries that was all about ibrd now let's see ida international development association it was founded on 27 september 1960s it is not 66 september 1960 it was uh, on 27 september 1960 it was founded it is also known as soft loan window because why it gives loan to least developed country at 0% interest rate now members are quite different there are only 174 members then it provides loan to least developed countries at 0% interest rate then co is same as ibrd so the co is same as ibrd then it's the it's uh, providing the loan in on the basis of uh, per capita income and one important full form i got so i have added that is mdri multilateral uh, debit re debt relief initiative and head headquarter is washington dc i hope this idea is clear remember the name, date 27 september 1960s uh, on which it was founded now let's discuss multilateral investment guarantee agency multilateral um, uh, uh, lateral um, investment guarantee agency was established in 1988 uske uh, baad india joined it in uh, 1994 then it protects from political risk uh, rather than uh, rather than uh, commercial risk uh, mega is the multi as it provides the insurance uh, insure facilities type uh, insurance in from in case of political risk occurrence okay, okay. then 
it encourage fdi for economic growth for it in encourage the foreign direct investment then the total members of mega are 181 only then headquarter in washington dc and exclusive vice president ex sorry executive uh, vice president is kiko honda okay kiko honda now we are at the second last one that is international construction for settlement of investment disputes these are i hope these slides are clearly visible icsid it was founded on 14th october 1966 then the purpose then the purpose is uh, to international <coughs> international arbitration and settlement of disputes the main purpose for establishing uh, icsid is the uh, international um, international arbitration and settlement of investment related disputes okay then it is a pair. the parent organization is world bank headquarter washington dc then members are quite different 163 members and india is not part of ibrd except uh, except icsid india is part of the all the uh, other all the five um, countries in the world bank group all the five um, subsidiaries of the world bank group except icsid if it odd one count odd one out question comes that india which among the following india is not part of so then the answer will be only icsid because uh, india has not joined icsid okay then secretary general uh, secretary general is make king make king bear and settlement of dispute is done in three steps first is the conciliation then is arbitration and third is the fact finding i hope this icsid is clear you can just take screenshot it will help you to recall let me bring from the this slide it will helpful now last uh, we are discussing the last one that is international finance corporation ifc ifc was established in 1956 it uh, it uh, it has uh, india is the founding member of uh, ifc then the total members in ifc are 186 members then it grants loan to private sector uh, the basic motive of establishing uh, ifc is to grant loan to private sectors okay it promotes growth of uh, growth of private uh, growth of private sectors and the headquarter is at washington dc okay i hope this world bank group is complete now there are some similarities between world bank and um, imf so what are the similarities that owned and directed by the governments of uh, member nation okay then the almost every country uh, on earth is a member of um, almost it is mentioned so all countries are not mem member of both the institutions because as you see that uh, as you have seen that Uh, I am at I M F has one ninety members and World Bank has only one eighty nine members. Then both concern themselves with the economic issues. Then we have both focuses on uh, broadening and strengthening the economic uh, of of their member nations. Then hold joint annual meetings. Then headquarter Washington D C and share joint task forces sessions and research efforts. So that's what all about the I M F and World Bank. i hope this both are clear now we are starting with the world trade organization wto the one of the most important topic what is the, the wto is only the global international organization dealing with the rules of trade between the nations at is um, at it's the heart uh, at it's the heart as the w the, the are the, the wto uh, agreements ne negotiated and signed by bulk of by bulk of world leading nations and ratified in their ratified in their parliaments the goal is to help the producers of the goods and services in exports and imports and the conduct of their business basically the wto is mainly assist provides assistance in the in case of trade reduce in case of any issues which are associated with trades like trade barriers or the rules in some nations are very strict so in this case wto assist in to resolve them then the headquarter of headquarter is 
Geneva, Switzerland. Then it was established on 1st January 1945. Then the created by created in the Argya Round negotiations 1986 to 1994. Then the membership 164 members are representing 98 percent of world trade. Then the budget uh, 197 Swiss francs for 2020. Then the secretary staff is 624 and the headquarter headquarter uh, sorry head earlier it was uh, what the the director general was david rica uh, what is the name sorry robert aswado was earlier but now it has changed that nigozi okonjo lela nol you can remember then and the recent member of this wto is the afghanistan joined in 2020 so let's see the structure of wto first comes the ministerial conference then the uh, is the highest decision making body in the wto then whatever decisions uh, then we have, uh, under the ministerial conference there is a general council which deals with which has two bodies that is dispute settlement body and trade po policy review bodies which deals uh, with trade policy review body main uh, checks the trade policies then and a dispute settlement body start, uh, performs the task of dispute settlement okay then the uh, it uh, under the general council there are three basic sectors that like good council uh, intellectual property council and service council ips you can remember now what are the functions of wto wto is, uh, has different functions like administering world world trade or organ agreement uh, sorry uh, administering world trade uh, agreement then forum for trade negotiation then uh, monitoring the national trade policies uh, handling trade disputes then technical assistance and training for the developing countries and cooperation with the um, international organizations i hope this is clear because in this topics there nothing relates to teach because uh, here all these things are um, on by hard basis we can just give the overview then what are the wto agreements wto has different agreements that general agreement on tariff and tra trade which is gat then general Ag agri agreement on trade and services gat then there is trade related aspects of intellectual property rights trips is an agreement then we have trade related investment major trims is there then agreement on agriculture agreement on technical barriers to trade tbt and there is sanitary and Kyoto Sanitary SPS Agreement. These are all the important agreements of uh, WTO which you should remember. The first one is GATT, second one is GATT, third one is TRIPS, fourth one is TRIMS, then fifth one is AOA Agreement or Agriculture, then fifth uh, last uh, second last is the Agreement on Technical Barriers Trade TBT, and the uh, last one is the. sanitary and kyoto sanitary sps agreement i hope this agreements are clear only the names i have provided regional economic integration the all the three things which i have discussed but one there is a um, important topic that what is regional economic integration it's a process which uh, in which two or more countries uh, makes the agree eliminate economic barriers with the with the end goal of the of enhancing the productivity and achieving the greater economic interdependence here what comes two or more countries come together they want to increase their enhance their productivity and achieve greater economic interdependence so they make they form their own groups this is called as uh, regional economic integration so here are basically five levels of uh, regional economic integration first one is the this free trade area then it is custom union then we have common market then it is economic union and this is the political union this is what they are uh, all the this is the lowest level free trade area is the lowest level 
and the political union is the topmost level may in last 2020 exam the sequence was the, is very much important so you can remember this by pcc pcc me cep okay means the free trade area let me change hmm. fcc ep okay then and that is free trade area custom union common market then uh, economic union uh, sorry economic union and political union fcc ep you can remember this because the same sequence is asked in um, 2020 exam so it means that it the it may further be asked or this type of odd one out question can be made which does not exist in the regional economic integration which among the following is not part part of regional economic integration now in case of free trade agreements there is only the removal of intra group tariffs only the intra group uh, tariffs will be removed then in case of common in case of free uh, custom union both the uh, intra group and uh, international tariff international uh, sorry intra group tariff and uh, um, external tariff both will be removed then in case of common market common market will be what free movement of goods of people and uh, capital then the uh, uh, tariff external tariff will be uh, common and removal of intra group trade slowly what is happening here the level is increasing the political economy will have all the political union will have all the five features then the economic union have this four features that is a common economic policy will be there and rest three will be the same and for uh, the political union there is the only um, first point is common that is integration of political and economic affairs and rest four few will be the additional features okay then here is Slowly enhancing in this way. Sorry, sorry. Where I am writing, the level is just increasing like this. Here only two fe one feature you are getting. Here on here you are getting two features. Here you are getting these three features. Here you are getting these four features, and here you can access all these five features. I hope this is clear. now what are the benefits behind uh, of regional economy uh, regional integration it creates the large pool of uh, consumer large pool of consumer with growing the uh, income sense similar culture uh, taste and social values their social values uh, the customer group which have uh, similar culture taste and social values the group will clarify okay then encouraging economies of scale of production encourage uh, the scale of uh, make advantage uh, can take advantage of the economies of scale of production increasing the region and the regions level of global competitiveness and the enhancing the economic growth through investment flows okay then next point is the freeing the flow of capital labor and technology uh, to the most productive areas of the region here you can flow the capital labor and technology to the most productive areas okay then next point comes uh, increasing cooperation p uh, increasing cooperation peace and security among the countries in the region whatever uh, by integrating in a particular region you can you are what you are doing you are enhancing the co cooperation among the countries then the maintenance of peace and the providing security to uh, the whole group okay then the last point is encouraging member states to enhance the enhance their social welfare to match that of the uh, most progressive states okay i hope this is clear it was all about your international business now we will start with the information system i hope the whatever the concepts i have explained in the international business you might have got, understood them so now we are starting with the information system this is your it part sometimes no question comes or sometimes only one question is asked from this information system so we will not go in a depth we are going to study the important information type system from where the questions are asked information system basically deals uh, with the combination of people uh, software communication devices networks and data resources that process can be storing 
retaining uh, uh, ret storing retrieving transforming information information system basically means it is a combination of software hardware devices and people which uh, which deals with what uh, storing of information retrieving of information transforming the information uh, data and uh, information for specific purpose for a purpose specific purpose all these things will be like the retrieval transformation store remember that the whatever the thing uh, information will be if it is unprocessed it will be called as data it is unprocessed in nature and the information information is processed in nature whenever the data process data process data will be called as information let's see what is executive support system eic executive information system it is also called as executive information system it is a type of it is a type of management information system intended to facilitate the support facilitate and support the information and decision making needs for senior executives providing the access to both the internal and external um, information in the relevant to the meeting of the strategic goals of the organization okay then what is esi eis talking about it is just as a part of management information system it is just facilitates and supports the information this information is being used by the senior executives while making their own decisions both in external and information uh, and this system makes them available with the uh, both internal and external information which meet their strategic goals of the organization it is commonly considered as a specialized form of decision support system eis eis is a ess is the specialized form of support dss okay decision support system next we have decision support system decision support system dss is specifically designed to help the management uh, to make the decisions in situations where the uncertainty about the possible outcomes of those decisions dss generally compromise the tools and techniques to help the gather relevant information and analyze the options and alternatives here what dss is means it provides uh, it give it is giving about the possible outcomes uh, in case of uncertainty and whenever there is a uncertain situation it helps in the the management in making the decision and helps them to ascertain to uh, estimate what can be the possible outcome okay it compromises by using certain tools and techniques here the relevant information is gathered it is analyzed the options are and alternatives are evaluated and dss often involves use of complex spreadsheets and databases to create the what if model what if model remember this point what if model is created in the decision support system next see the management information system all of you might have idea about this mif mis is a use of uh, information technology people and business processes to record store and process the data to produce information here all types of uh, data regarding the people technology and business is recorded uh, to ma make the to provide information in which helps in the decision makers can make the day to day decisions here the specialized decision were taken in case of mis but he, uh, sorry in case of dss but here the day to day decisions are taken by using the mis system okay the full form of mis is management uh, uh, information system everyone knows then the purpose of mis to extract the data from the varied sources and derive insights of the of that drive business growth okay to derive uh, that derive business growth here different sources from where the mis should uh, the purpose of mis to, to extract the data which helps in the or uh, business growth next we have tps that is transaction pro processing system transaction processing system this type of information system is used to record the day to day transaction as the name suggests it is helpful for uh, recording the transaction of a business an example of T tps means the transaction processing system is the p point of sale pos system a, a pos 
system is the used to record the daily sales whatever the daily sales are uh, happening in the business a uh, business is uh, whatever the daily sales are occurring are recorded in the pos system which is a part of tps that is transaction processing uh, system then we have knowledge management system qms knowledge management system is the system is a tool used by the companies to help the organization uh, to help to organize documentation frequently asked question and other information into easily accessible formats for both the internal and external customers here what is done in this kms which means which means knowledge management system here the proper documentation and the frequently asked question and the information uh, is arranged in a most accessible way for the both internal and external customer using knowledge management system can help and to keep the documentation up to date assist the customer in finding their own answers and manage knowledge by users uh, knowledge access and permissions across the user groups okay here what is uh, what they are providing so suppose if you have uh, you seen the amazon sites here whenever you select a particular product to get the review there are option of uh, questions and answers uh, faqs are there that is whatever how much uh, it's it's how much time it will work how much time uh, it can be used uh, it is du either durable or not how many how long it is durable such type of common questions are there so these are maintained by what this is maintained by kms okay it's a tool the valuable to both small businesses and the, the just starting business who are the it is beneficial to the, all the sort of business either it is global enterprise either it is a, just a small scale business or it is a just a startup all it is because it need we need to distribute the information to a wide variety of audience we have to distribute the knowledge to wide variety of audience so it is uh, execute it is used in all the uh, for it can be used for all sort of business next these were all the important information system i have discussed now we are discussing on the important terminology mentioned in the syllabus that is data warehousing and data mining data warehousing is what data warehouses is a storage area for proce for processed and integrated data across the different sources which will help both the operational data and external data here what is where data warehouse as the you know that generally warehouses are there to just the the purpose basic purpose is what storage so here data warehousing is what doing what here it is storing the processed and integrated data whatever the processed and integrated data across different sources from wherever the process data is coming it is storing in um, Um, both way uh, in such a way that the extra operational data and inter external data both type of data are stored okay then data warehouse offers the organization an ability to gather and uh, store it offers the ability um, to gather and store the entire information in a single conceptual enterprise repository all the single conceptual in a single conceptual enterprise repository all types of data is stored okay then it allows the users to extract the required data from the business analysis uh, for the business analysis and strategic decision making whenever the company has to make any strategic decision or whenever have to perform the business analysis task they they can use this data warehouse by uh, to extract the required data okay so that was the data warehousing here by seeing this diagram it will be clear to you see here whatever here are there are three data for, uh, sources 1 2 and 3 here from here the data are coming to the extract transformation extract transformation and load processes after this etp means etlp means extract transport load and process the it will flow to here this data warehouse and whenever it is required it will be used by visualization it will be used in the by reporting and it will be used by business intelligence so this was all about data warehousing now we are going to discuss the data mining the process of uh, extracting the information to identify the patterns trends uh, and use data that could uh, that would allow the business to make uh, 
to take the data driven decisions from the huge sets from the huge sets of data is called as data mining a large number of data is um, um, stored and where only you need to sub certain trends pattern data to take your decision that is will be done by what data will be done in case of data mining then data mining is a process of uh, investigating hidden patterns it is used in case of hidden patterns of information to various prospect to various prospectives categorization into the categorization into the useful data which is called as collected and assembled in, in a particular area the data will be uh, in case of data mining the data will be assessed in a accessed in a very assembled and very categorization is um, proper categorization will be made, uh, made as per the areas okay then third point comes that data mining is an act of automatically searching for the large stores of information here automation a feature of automatic uh, automatically searching is there that it search tends to large it search for the la large store of information to find the trends and patterns that go beyond the simple analysis here the simple uh, simple analysis will not be there here will be a complex one okay then the data mining uses the complex mathematical uh, mathematical algorithms complex mathematical al algorithms will be used for the data segments to evaluate the probability of the future events okay data mining is also called as knowledge discovery of the data of knowledge discovery kddd sorry k double d you can kd pathak was there in aapki adalat you might have seen in on sony channel so here uh, data mining is also known as kd uh, k d d means the knowledge discovery of data i hope this is clear here is the diagram of the data mining that here extract information is there in this two drums and there the data is being processed okay here the important data will be uh, accessed by using mathematical algorithm so this was all about the ib and it i hope you enjoyed the uh, course uh, the unit and understood uh, all the concepts related to the ib uh, information technology and uh, international business and now i am confident that after studying this much and after using your own prior knowledge you will be able to study score the good marks from this unit thank you bye we will meet in next video keep studying and keep growing all the best